everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Camille Miles, and if you'd like more videos like covers, original songs, and various videos with my sisters and family, please go ahead and subscribe. Today's video is going to be, well, you already saw the title, so Worst Things About Living in France. It was inspired by a video that I saw by Rafna, who did Worst Things About Living in Iceland. This is a personal list. I have my own opinions about what's the best and worst things about living in France. So I will be doing a part two, so best things living in France. And trust me, there are a lot more. So let's get to it. I have my list here, so I will be looking down quite a bit to make sure that I'm not forgetting anything. Number one for me, I'm a hot natured person and I live in southern France. Therefore, the weather is probably the worst thing for me about living here. It almost never snows, but like I remember once it snowed this much and that was amazing. It was a Sunday, so we were out with my grandparents and like we were snowboarding on this little bitty of snow. So the winters, all in all, there's not a whole lot of precipitation when it's really cold, so it doesn't snow. Uh, it rains quite a bit in fall and in spring and a little bit in winter too. The main thing for me is the summer. Summers can get really hot here, like up to 37 degrees Celsius on a regular basis. If for several days in a row the temperature doesn't get any lower than 10 degrees below the maximum degrees of that day, in Celsius of course, it's called a canicule and we get those pretty much every year, multiple times a year. Definitely not cool. Another thing that ties into that, number two, is air conditioning and cooled buildings are not very common here. So for example, when we moved into our house, we had to install AC units. School buildings are not cooled. There are heaters, but they use those, I would say, probably more than necessary. <laughs> buildings in the winter can tend to be pretty warm because people don't really like to open up the windows to let the cool air in. Number three is a completely different subject. When I go to the States, I really enjoy like thrifting and going to TJ Maxx, Goodwill and stuff like that because it's a great way of getting nice clothes for a very, very small amount of the price that you would pay from the brand name store, etc. And they don't have those here. So like, you know, every now and then you can see a, a really cute top that's pretty much not used and or like it still has the tags on it, which is really cool. I just kind of miss having that here. Like sometimes you'll have a retail store, but usually it's like really vintage stuff. So it's still really expensive. I would say more expensive than it needs to be, but probably wouldn't know what's a good price and what's not. Next. Uh, number four... Okay, school. First of all, it's long because you have to start when you're three and you have to go all the way until you're 16. So right now, legally, I could stop school, but I'm not going to because otherwise you basically can't do much. High school in France is three years and you can choose to either do um, lycée général most people do that. It's normal classes. Everybody has the same. It's not preparing you for a certain job or anything. It's very basic. A lot of people who want to go into the medical field do that. Um, I'm not going to explain the whole French school system because it's a little bit too complicated. So basically in high school you can either do um, général, which is general for the general people. You can do professionnel or pro which is um, training you to do a certain line of job for example like at my school there's a security school portion of the school and like you'll see them go by in their uniforms and stuff so I, I kind of wanted to do that but then I realized that it required physical fitness not gonna happen. And then you have CAPIS, which are more, it's kind of like pro, but I think it's like more in the, more in the job and you get paid. So yeah, basically you, you end school and you already have a job. I don't know a whole lot about pro and CAP because I just really don't know what I'm going to do later on, so I'm just doing général. That's a basic roundup of high school. It's not too bad. I mean, I think it's pretty cool because then you can you can really choose what you want to do and do the, the school that goes with it. For me, the issue is the long days. Like, France has got the longest school days in all of Europe. Like, the longest you can have school is from 8 to 6 with a one-hour lunch hole from, say, like, 1 to 2. 
and that kind of bothers me because like then you can't really do anything in your afternoons because you have school and you can't do much in the evenings because you have homework so pretty much all day you're just doing schoolwork. The next, the long school year. So the school year is extremely, extremely, extremely long. <laughs> At least it feels like that for me because you go from September 1st all the way till July 1st. That leaves two months of vacation, but I mean, you already have the long school days, like I said, so it kind of eats up on your school time. So technically you're supposed to go to school until July 1st, like this year it's July 4th. Most people don't, like school kind of unofficially ends middle of June for the lycée because all the premières and terminales have their backs. It's like a big test at the end of high school, it's, it's like your, your exams, there, it's your exams. Anyway, you stop school about like June 10th. No, I stopped school about June 10th, the second do. But like everybody else, they either have exams after that or they're expected to go to school until like the last week of June. We are moving on to number five, sports. I don't know about you guys, but I, I, I enjoy watching college basketball. My family's gonna see this, so they're just gonna know. But anyway, I think that it's really cool that in the States you have like your school colors, you have homecoming, you have prom, you have college sports, you have high school sports teams, which are like still super important. You have the cheer team, you have this like whole team spirit in school. And like here you don't really have that. You'll say, oh yeah, say I was from blah 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 school and oh yeah, I, you were from that school, oh I was from blah 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 school. There's no real school spirit, I guess, kind of thing, and it just makes for, I feel like, a lot more ind individualist school. Like, there's not much going on to tie the kids into their school to make them more motivated or whatever. Which, like, I think that college sports, I think that's really cool because, like, that way you can get scholarships and stuff like that, which is really, really nice, especially for the U.S. colleges, which cost a lot more. But, like, here there's not that, and like, there's no cheer team. But yeah, like, I would, th I think that it would be really cool to be able to go some weekend and, like, cheer on my school team with my school colors on, like, that. That just sounds really cool to me. I mean, I've never personally done it, but I think that would be an experience, you know? And so, yeah, they don't really do that here. They have a sports organization kind of thing. It's called the UNSS. You have, like, a couple sports that you can choose from and you do that all year and you pay to get in and like you can go to competitions and stuff like that but it doesn't involve the whole school moving on we spent a lot of time on that and uh, number six is a poor level of english i don't know how much of an authority i am on this subject because to be honest i've only lived in france and the states but in the states of course there's a great level of english and i just feel like if you only spoke english here it would be really hard to get around like you'll encounter the occasional person who is just like super good at english like i know a couple of people like that and they're more the exception than the rule of course like this is me comparing in my mind to like a country where i'd want to live for example like finland iceland norway or something like that because they have the cold like i previously mentioned i'm really hot natured so that's like my dream would come true but uh yeah the level of english here is pretty poor so your english teachers here won't necessarily be native speakers like i had an american english teacher and an irish english teacher moving on to number seven which is striking the reason people strike here for the most part is just to show that they disagree and they're just going to strike and if people don't give them exactly what they want they will not make any compromise and they will just keep on striking for like a whole year or until they just realize that nobody's going to listen so they just stop striking it's kind of annoying because a lot of people take the city bus to go to to go to DC because you can either have the school bus that comes pick you to pick you up or you get two free trajet rides. You get two free rides on the city bus or metro because they're the same company per day that you would have school. So like today, normally if I took the city bus, I wouldn't be paying. There are a lot of unions here. They're, they're called syndicats. 
I feel like I'm speaking and I don't even know for sure so if it's not really this guys just don't be super mad at me please because I'm not really sure how it all works but I know how it affects me and I know what I see so I'm gonna go off of that and just basically these big sandikas will say we're going on strike. There is one particular one I think it's called the CGT. I, I know it involves like a lot of big groups of people so when they go on strike which they do very often like you cannot go anywhere by train. When public transport goes on strike, it is a big issue, especially in the area where I live. Public transport is a super important thing because it basically connects the whole area together. Like, I know that there are some regions in France where they don't have this because it's more rural, but this is a pretty much urbanized area because we're just outside of a big city. And so when public transport shuts down, a lot of people just can't go anywhere. So anyway, striking can sometimes yield to good things, but sometimes it's just a uh, showing of being unhappy and the thing is that they do it so often that it just really loses its valor. And then there are these manifestations, these big groups of people who are striking but who are still going to ruin everything for everybody else around them, who are going to blockade roads and stuff like that, and there's just really no point. Like, if you're unhappy about something, don't strike on a Saturday. Strike on a weekday when you would be working, instead of ruining business for everybody around you. Like. A lot of businesses suffered from the big strike that occurred last year. People couldn't get out because of blockades, and number two, because their store fronts were like being vandalized and stuff like that, and it's just crazy. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. I'd really appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified next time I post a new video, which will probably be the best things about living in France. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next week.